Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Barbara Stevenson and I'm the president of the American Foreign Service Association. In 1996, a Senate resolution was passed calling for the first Friday of May to be recognized as American Foreign Service Day. That resolution had 54 co-sponsors from both parties. One of them, then Secretary John Kerry, is with us today in a different role, Secretary of State. Thank you for your support, Mr. Secretary, then and now. AFSA proudly maintains the memorial plaques on these walls as a testament to the service and sacrifice of the career professionals in the Foreign Service who represent the United States and American people around the globe. I'm honored to join friends and colleagues from the extended Foreign Affairs family to pay tribute to those who are no longer with us but will always be remembered. The presence of Secretary Kerry here with us today underscores the respect that we have for those who did not make it back home. Having grown up in the Foreign Service, Mr. Secretary, you understand better than most the challenges of this life, of global deplo deployment, of worldwide availability. Today, I also welcome many leaders from across our community. USAID Administrator Gail Smith, Deputy Secretary Heather Higginbottom, Under Secretary Pat Kennedy, Assistant Secretary Greg Starr, Assistant Secretary Ann Patterson, Director General Arnold Chacon, Foreign Commercial Service Deputy Director General Judy Ranke, USAID Counselor Susan Reichley, and Ambassadors Zalme Khalilzad, Jim Jeffrey, John Negroponte, Joe Saloum, Pat Butenis, and William Todd. Most importantly, we are joined today by the family of today's honoree, Stephen Farley. Thank you for being here. We hope that the addition of Stephen's name to this permanent honor roll will give you some comfort. I'm also touched that Foreign Service Officer Denise Marsh is with us today. Denise was with Steve in Sodder City when the attack occurred, and she was awarded the Medal of Valor for her actions. Thank you for being here, Denise. Steve is the seventh person honored on this wall as a result of his service in Iraq, a reminder of the challenges and indeed the perilous environments in which we serve. Members of the Foreign Service deploy worldwide to protect and serve America's people, interests, and values. Deploying worldwide inevitably means that we run into risk, we run into harm's way. We know these risks are inherent in our mission and ask only for a good faith effort to mitigate those risks so that we can do our job. Maintaining the strong, enduring global presence needed to effectively pursue America's foreign policy interests. Since 1933, when this plaque was first unveiled, we have inscribed 247 names onto this wall. Today, that number grows to 248 as we recognize another American who proudly served his country and whose loss is still felt, not only by his family and friends, but also by the community in which he served. To Steve's family and friends gathered here, I express our deepest sympathy for your loss and our enduring gratitude for his service. I now ask you to stand as the United States Armed Forces Color Guard presents the colors. Then please remain standing to join me in saying, the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. I will now read a message from President Barack Obama.
I send greetings to all those observing Foreign Affairs Day 2016 at federal agencies and at embassies, consulates, and missions around the globe. America has always been driven by women and men with a commitment to upholding the values of freedom and equality. The dedicated professionals in our Foreign Service carry this legacy forward every day, working to protect our collective security and representing the best our nation has to offer, both at home and abroad. On Foreign Affairs Day, we thank the members of our Foreign Service for their tireless efforts, and we honor the memories of their fallen colleagues. We reflect on the 20th anniversary of the plane crash that killed Secretary of Commerce Ronald Brown and his delegation during a trade mission in Croatia. And we pay solemn tribute to Stephen L. Farley, who died on June 24, 2008, while helping Iraqi citizens rebuild and revitalize their local government. Stephen's name will be inscribed on the memorial plaque alongside Secretary Brown and over 240 other individuals whom our country honors for extraordinary selflessness and service. I join Secretary Kerry in recognizing all members of the Foreign Service who lost their lives while working to shape a more just and peaceful world. And I express my sincere appreciation to those in diplomatic service, along with their families, for striving to safeguard the promise of a brighter future. Signed, President Barack Obama. It is now my great honor to turn the podium over to our Secretary of State, John Kerry. <clears throat> well, Barbara, thank you very, very much. Thank you for your a tremendous work with AFSA. You never forget the folks who are on active duty or retired, and we're very grateful to you for that. Good afternoon to everybody. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Barbara has uh, listed the names of all our distinguished guests. I just want to thank all of them for being here. I'm particularly grateful to the senior leadership of the State Department and to our ambassadors, the Emeritus. Uh, we're very appreciative <clears throat> that you came here to honor not just Stephen, but everybody whose name is on this plaque. Uh, <clears throat> Donna, and Brett, and Cameron, and Chris, and the entire Farley family, <clears throat> distinguished guests of the Farley family. We honor a very special individual today, Captain Stephen Farley. He dedicated his life to defending our nation and to promoting our values. And he lost his life in a service to our country's ideals of justice and liberty for all when he was working in Iraq to deliver that to other people because he believed in that so deeply. Many of us already know Steve's story, the proud son of Oklahoma, the small business owner in Guthrie, uh, the sailor and the naval reservist who served in Korea, Japan, and Iraq, the man who, after shedding his military uniform, still wanted to serve and made the brave decision to return to the front lines in civilian clothing in order to help Iraqis build a brighter future. Our friend, one friend said of uh, Steve, he was the kind of a guy that when he walked into a crowd, he had this magnetic personality. You wanted to know what he was about. And for anyone who ever met Steve or heard his story, it wouldn't take long to see what his life was about in a world of service. Duty was literally in his blood. The descendant of a family whose members had served in every U.S. war uh, since the American Revolution. And I had a moment back here before we met to meet with his dad who was telling me about his service uh, in Vietnam, his two tours of duty. So it is no surprise that Steve always answered the call, no matter what the request or how daunting the task. When the mayor of Guthrie needed a hand with a local event or a project, he could count on Steve to help. When recruited to join the armed forces as a teenager, Steve immediately signed up. And when he finished college and then business school, he re-entered military life. When active duty ended, he continued on with reserve duty. When the 9-11 attacks shocked our nation, 
Steve was called to action once more. And when his career in the Navy came to a close, <clears throat> he joined the State Department's effort to stabilize, secure, and rebuild Iraqi communities. After all that time, <clears throat> excuse me, after all that time, after he had seen and experienced and given so much, you could forgive any person for becoming jaded or cynical, but not Steve. As he wrote to family and friends from Baghdad just months before his death, what matters is that these people only want for their families the things that every American wants for theirs, safety and security for loved ones, the opportunity to see children grow and learn to become adults, pursuing those things that give us peace with our God and a sense of reason for our existence. Such powerful words completely capture Steve's empathy and his optimism at the same time. And they reflect as well the faith and the commitment of so many of the foreign affairs professionals who represent our nation across the globe. It is fitting that Steve should be remembered by what he did for others, by his selfless actions and his unyielding belief in the better angels of humanity. That's simply who he was. As another friend and fellow naval officer put it, he showed us how to live our lives, adding, sometimes when you meet someone, you don't realize that they're a hero. So public servant, friend, hero, beloved husband, father, brother, and son, this is what Steve Farley was all about. This is his legacy. And today, his name has been carved into the marble of the State Department. Throughout his career, his deeds have been inscribed heretofore in the lives of the people that he met, in the difference that he made, the people he touched and helped. Now and always, his story is going to be etched in the hearts of all that knew him and who loved him. His heroism will continue to inspire everyone who carries forward the daily work of this department. President Kennedy famously said in his inaugural, here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. He took it to heart. May God bless his memory, the Farley family, the country Steve loved so much and served so well. Farley family, join us in standing. Please stand, everyone, as the United States Armed Forces Color Guard retires the colors. This concludes our ceremony. Thank you all for being here today. <laughs>